precious and irreplaceable cultural heritage lies under the sea. The UNESCO 2001 Convention on the Protection of the Underwater Cultural Heritage safeguards these sites. The convention provides states with a scientific and technical advisory body ready to assist quickly and directly in emergencies in order to defend our heritage. The body has helped Haiti against treasure hunters claiming to have found the Santa Maria, the famous ship of Christopher Columbus. It assisted Madagascar in defending its heritage against treasure hunters searching for the pirate William Kidd's treasure. It has also evaluated a Spanish galleon in Panama's waters, which had been highly damaged by those searching for its precious cargo. States that lack underwater archaeologists can call on the UNESCO advisory body for assistance. No mundo, existem 580 reservas da biosfera distribuída por 114 países, incluindo a Ilha do Príncipe. Existe uma grande diversidade biológica nos ecossistemas marinhos, bem como terrestres. Após ter sido considerada Património Mundial da Biosfera pela Unesco, Príncipe passou a ser a primeira reserva da biosfera africana a integrar a Rede Mundial de Reservas da Biosfera Insulares e Costeiras. Aqui está provado que a relação entre o homem e a natureza é sustentável. Quando nós colocamos água, por exemplo, na dam, e usamos água para a agricultura, nós estamos tomando água de alimentação da costa. E muitas vezes as pessoas não percebem isso. E então, isso é uma mudança de alimentação para as pessoas que são causadas por isso. You know, trying to increase agriculture, but we are decreasing fisheries. So this kind of balance needs to be considered and very often it isn't. Sandwatch, an educational tool for sustainable development. Sandwatch is an educational project that seeks to change people's lifestyles and alert communities about the fragility of the marine and coastal environment and the necessity of using it wisely. The main purpose of this project is to motivate teachers, students and the general community to work together for the benefit of the coastal and marine resources. This project originated during the first regional environmental education workshop in the Caribbean, organized by UNESCO. At present, this project is active in more than 35 countries. Through the activities proposed in Sandwatch, Students can identify and critically evaluate the problems that frequently occur in our beaches, gathering information and proposing viable alternatives to resolve these conflicts and prevent future problems. The methodology that is used in the Sandwatch project consists of four primary steps, monitoring, analysis, sharing information and taking action in order to help assure that the coastal and marine resources are treasured and conserved for future generations.
or by 2100, we'll have 50 plus centimeter sea level rise. This is actually a mean value which is built on melt. How much ice is melting and running towards the ocean make 50% of the sea level rise out. The other 50% is the thermal expansion of the ocean. The 59 centimeter is really the lower end of the prediction. It can easily be a meter, even one and a half meters by 2100. What sea level rise is expected to do in other countries in 25 years, Jakarta is already facing today. At high tide, large parts of the city are already flooded. During a few days of heavy rainfall, more than 70% of Jakarta is flooded. The risk for New York City is very real. In fact, New York City has already been flooded. The U.S. and this region uh, have not been as uh, swift as people in the EU and people in Japan to really uh, begin to focus on climate adaptation. We think that uh, there's a lot to learn from Japan, from the Netherlands. An example of Rotterdam's current adaptation is creating surface water storage in the city, which can help during extreme rainfall. There are many initiatives for creating floating buildings, like this pavilion. Another goal is to build more and more green roofs. They slow down the runoff of rainwater to the sewer system. It it's also has a kind of isolating effect, so it's also energy saving. It's very important to exchange information, so we, we, we all have to act on this issue. And it's very important to join forces. And we are now preparing a new proposal that is to create a course on advanced uh, study um, issues, uh, st study water science here. So that is to bring uh, many different topics together and uh, it, uh, make an articulation uh, among the different uh, UNESCO chairs uh, dealing with water. So we're going to have a, a, a short mandatory curriculum and then most of the courses will be provided by the different uh, UNESCO chairs. And we have chairs in water diplomacy, gender issue, culture, uh, uh, archaeology, architecture, eco-hydrology, hydrology, so many, many topics. The idea is to create people with a very broad knowledge about water issues. I believe that nowadays uh, sharing and networking is a solution, yeah. That's the nature of scientific uh, endeavors, yeah, always cooperating, yeah.